بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم our first integral is x from 0 to 1 log 1 minus x log x plus x squared over 1 plus x squared this logarithm in the numerator is log x times 1 plus x which is log x plus log 1 plus x plus log 1 minus x times log 1 plus x from log 1 minus x subtract log 1 plus x we need to add the square of log 1 plus x this bracket is log 1 minus x over 1 plus x for this product use the identity alpha beta equal to 1 half alpha squared plus 1 half beta squared minus 1 half alpha minus beta squared log x times log 1 minus x is 1 half times the square of log 1 minus x plus 1 half times the square of log x minus 1 half the square of log 1 minus x minus log x this bracket is log 1 minus x over x let's start by integrating this term here after dividing it by 1 plus x squared use the change of variables y equal to 1 minus x over x if x is 1 y is 0 if x tends to 0 from above y tends to plus infinity x is 1 over 1 plus y dx is minus dy over 1 plus y squared the numerator becomes the square of log y 1 plus x squared is 1 plus 1 over 1 plus y squared here is dx multiplying we get 1 plus y squared plus 1 which is 2 plus 2y plus y squared for this part use the substitution y equal to 1 minus x we get the square of log y in the numerator the denominator becomes 1 plus the square of 1 minus y which is 2 minus 2y plus y squared the limits of integration are still from 0 to 1. what about this term the integral from 0 to 1 is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity written here using variable y minus the integral from 1 to infinity do the change of variables y equal to 1 over x when x is 1 y is 1 when x tends to infinity y tends to 0 the denominator is 1 plus y squared the numerator is the square of log 1 plus 1 over y which is the square of log 1 plus y minus log y this integral is here expand the square as the square of log 1 plus y plus the square of log y minus 2 log y log 1 plus y split into three integrals the integral with the square of log 1 plus y is exactly the integral on the left hand side with a minus sign we can move this to the left hand side we get double this integral dividing both sides by two we get that this integral is one half the integral y from zero to infinity of the square of log one plus y over one plus y squared written here using the variable x plus integral y from zero to one log y log one plus y over one plus y squared minus one half integral y from zero to one the square of log y over one plus y squared in this integral here do the substitution x equal to y minus one the numerator becomes the square of log y when x is zero y is one when x tends to infinity y tends to infinity the new integral is now from one to infinity in the denominator we get one plus y minus one squared which is two minus two y plus y squared now let's process this part let y be equal to one minus x over one plus x when x is zero y is one when x is one y is zero x is one minus y over one plus y and one plus x is two over one plus y dx is minus two dy over one plus y squared this logarithm becomes log y that one becomes log two over one plus y which is log two minus log one plus y so we can split this into two integrals in one of them we have log two times log y in the other we have log one plus y times log y we can evaluate this integral using this useful result integral x from zero to one x to the a log x to the b is minus one to the power b gamma of b plus one divided by one plus a to the power one plus b what we do here is that we write one over one plus y squared as a series summation over non-negative integer g of minus one to the g y squared to the power g then we integrate term by term we have the integral y from 0 to 1 y to the power 2g times log y using this result the numerator is minus 1 to the power 1 which is minus 1 gamma of 2 is 1 downstairs we get 2g plus 1 squared this sum here is minus 1 times catalan's constant 1 over 1 squared minus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 5 squared minus 1 over 7 squared and so on this part is minus g log 2 this is the integral of interest it was split into five integrals we manipulated four of them this one is minus half integral y from zero to infinity the square of log y over two plus two y plus y squared that one is one half integral y from zero to one the square of log y over two minus two y plus y squared note that here we have plus two y there we have minus two y this integral is the sum of three integrals one of them is exactly this integral here but with a minus sign these terms go away we have another integral one half y from one to infinity the square of log y over two minus two y plus y squared the integrand here is exactly like this integral this is from zero to one here the limits are from one to infinity 
So these two integrals can be combined as one half integral y from zero to infinity, the square of log y over two minus two y plus y squared. We also got that integral, but we got its negative from this guy. So the integral of interest is this integral plus this one minus g log two. Both integrals are from zero to infinity. Let's combine them. After simplifying, we get that the integrand is two y, the square of log y over four plus y to the power four. Do the change of variables, y equal to square root two, square root u, taking one half out of the bracket. We get one over four, taking this four as a common factor, we have one over 16. Then we have this two here, square root two times the square root two over two, that's one. The outside factor is one over eight. The denominator is one plus u squared. The numerator is the sum of log u and log two, which is expanded like this. The antiderivative of one plus u squared is the inverse tangent of u. And using the limits of integration, this is pi over two. Let's rewrite the remaining integral as the sum of two identical integrals. And this integral change u to one over u. We get the same integrand, except that this two log u becomes minus two log u. Recombining the two integrals, these are canceled. We get one eighth times integral u from zero to infinity, the square of log u divided by one plus u squared. Replace u by the square root of t. We get one over 64, the integral t from zero to infinity, t to the minus half over one plus t times the square of log t. If we have an integral like this without the logarithm and with this power written as eta minus one half, differentiating under the integral sign twice with respect to eta gives us this integral of interest. So we can write it as one over 64, the second derivative with respect to eta of this integral here, which is beta of eta plus one half and one minus eta plus one half. That's beta of one half plus eta and one half minus eta. This is gamma of one half plus eta times gamma of one half minus eta divided by gamma of one, which is one. Using the reflection rule, this product of gamma functions is pi times the cosecant of pi times eta plus one half. This is the secant of pi eta. When we differentiate twice with respect to eta, we get pi squared times pi, that's pi cubed. The last step is to differentiate the secant twice and evaluate the derivative at zero, we get one. So this part here is pi cubed over 64. Integral x from zero to one, log one minus x, log x plus x squared over one plus x squared is pi times the square of log two over 16 minus g log two plus pi cubed over 64. Our second integral is a fractional part triple integral. x, y, and z from zero to one, x plus y plus z cubed times the square of the fractional part of one over the sum. The fractional part of real number alpha is alpha minus the floor of alpha. The floor of alpha is the greatest integer less than or equal to alpha. The fractional part of one over x plus y plus z is one over the sum minus the floor of one over the sum. Expanding the square, we get one over the sum squared plus the floor squared minus two over the sum times the floor of one over the sum. We can split into two integrals. In the first one, we need to integrate the sum in the second one, we have the floor and it's a square. When we integrate with respect to x, we get one half x plus y plus z squared. Using the limits of integration, we get one plus y plus z squared minus y plus z squared. When we integrate this part with respect to y, we get one third, one plus y plus z cubed minus y plus z cubed. Using the limits of integration, we get one over three. When y is one, we have two plus z cubed minus one plus z cubed minus when y is zero, we have one plus z cubed minus z cubed. All in all, we have one half times one third, that's one over six. The integrand is two plus z cubed minus two times one plus z cubed plus z cubed. Integrating with respect to z, we get that this integral is three over two. For the integral involving the floor function, I use the change of variables, u equal to x plus y plus z, v equal to x plus y and w equal to x. u is greater than or equal to v, which is greater than or equal to w. W is in the range from zero to one. V is in the range from zero to two. U is in the range from zero to three. DX, DY, DZ is equal to DW, DV, DU over the absolute determinant of this Jacobian matrix. The absolute determinant is equal to one. U, which is the sum of X and Y and Z is in the range from zero to three. However, if U exceeds one, its reciprocal is less than one and the floor is equal to zero. The good news is that when we do the trivial integration with respect to U, V and W, we need only to consider the case in which u is from zero to one. V is less than u, so V is integrated from zero to u. W is less than V, W is integrated from zero to V.
the integrand is u cubed times the square of the floor of 1 over u minus 2 u squared times the floor of 1 over u. If we integrate with respect to w, we get v. If we do the integral v from 0 to u of v, we get 1 half u squared. The last integral to manage is 1 half integral u from 0 to 1, u to the power 5 times the square of the floor of 1 over u minus 2 u to the power 4 times the floor of 1 over u. u is between 0 and 1. 1 over u is greater than 1. If 1 over u is between the positive integer m and m plus 1, the floor of 1 over u is equal to m. Taking the reciprocal of all sides, we get that 1 over m is greater than or equal to u, which is greater than 1 over m plus 1. This integral is written as a sum of integrals. Specifically, we sum over positive integer m. Integral u from 1 over m plus 1 to 1 over m, u to the 5 times m squared minus 2 u to the 4 times m. The antiderivative of u to the 5 is 1 over 6 u to the power 6. This is what we get when we use the limits of integration. The antiderivative of u to the 4 is 1 over 5 u to the power 5. We get this part here. We need to evaluate the sum. I will try to obtain telescopic sums. m squared over m to the 6, that's 1 over m to the 4. We want to have minus 1 over m plus 1 to the power 4. But what we have is m squared over m plus 1 to the power 6. We can write m squared as m plus 1 squared minus 2 between brackets m plus 1 plus 1. This 1 times m can be written as m plus 1 minus 1. We get summation over positive integer m of 1 over m to the power 4 minus 1 over m plus 1 to the power 4. We have the same sum there. We also get extra terms. 2 divided by 12, that's 1 over 6. Summation m from 1 to infinity, 1 over m plus 1 to the power 4, 6. And we have minus 1 over 5, summation m from 1 to infinity, 1 over m plus 1 to the power 5. The sum is 1 over 2 to the power 6, plus 1 over 3 to the power 6, plus 1 over 4 to the power 6, and so on. That's zeta of 6 minus 1. Because the power here is 5, this sum is zeta of 5 minus 1. This telescopic sum is 1. Our final result is zeta of 6 times minus 1 over 12. Plus zeta of 5, it's multiplied by 1 over 6 minus 1 over 5. That's minus 1 over 30. The sum of the other terms is exactly equal to 0. So this integral with the floor function is equal to minus 1 over 30 zeta of 5 minus 1 over 12 zeta of 6. To obtain our integral of interest, we add 3 over 2.